Hey everybody, today we're going to do some game theory. Have you ever wondered how balance relates to deck diversity? We all kind of assume that as one on this page says that as game balance increases, the number of decks being played in the meta also increases. But what I would like to add is that the game becomes boring at very low deck diversity and very high game balance. Why? Because at low diversity, there's only few options being played, and so the game meta feels stale, and at high game balance, all the options feel exactly the same, which is also very stale. It's almost the same thing as playing the same deck, just with different card art. Looking more carefully at the graph in front of you, this graph represents the ideal situation where everybody is rational. Again, at the far extreme of imbalance, the meta is oppressive and boring, not because it's imbalanced so much, but because it as low diversity. That makes it unfun. As you move to extreme balance, the perfect balance, the game is unfun because it's kind of like a coin flip. And so you want to be in that sweet middle spot where the game isn't too undiverse or too like one deck and the game isn't too perfectly balanced that it feels samey. Our next graph looks at a more realistic situation. Now it's important to note that this is speculation on my part. The amount of diversity in the meta based on balance when we look at actual players is going to be different than this, but this is how I imagine it looking right now. So the extremes are the same. Only one deck playable is still very boring and when all decks are playable, it's still boring. But in the middle, that's where it changes. I speculate that when the game is imbalanced, not completely imbalanced, but imbalanced, we have kind of a force meta. The developers make cards overstatted on purpose in order to make us play those decks. And so those imbalances actually increase diversity. And then as those imbalances are removed, players become uncreative. They all gravitate to the same deck some pro is playing, or if Rethaz says King Bran is good, everybody plays King Bran. And the meta actually decreases in diversity and becomes stale again. But as balance becomes, like if we push the balance even more, which is what the developers are kind of doing right now, we get into this little corner where the game is very balanced and the meta is very diverse, or moderately diverse. Because now people are not feeling uh, antsy about whatever they're playing because the decks are, the archetypes are all kind of comparable to each other. Now it's not all the way to the very extreme where they're exactly the same. Again, people are not rational, so the graph curves up and down like this. Now we're going to directly compare the ideal and what I imagine a more realistic scenario to be. You have that meme gap where people are taking risky decks that maybe win 22% of the time, but when they do, it's hilarious and amazing. The decks aren't all that viable. They're very imbalanced, but they're fun. And then we have the game getting more balanced, and we have this creativity gap. Now, the creativity gap is explained by three major factors. One is it's expensive. People's collections aren't big enough to try all the different decks, so they gravitate to cheaper decks and they gravitate to decks that are easier to play, which is the second factor, difficulty. If I had a choice between deck A and deck B, and deck B is a lot harder than deck A, but they have the same win rate, then I'm going to play deck A. The final factor is just, like in the name of the gap, creativity. People are copying each other instead of making their own decks. There are a lot of viable options, but people don't explore them because they think, you know, they're just copying the other top players. The biggest reduction of fun and diversity in the game is not the developers having poor balance in their game, but players not exploring those viable and instead copying each other. There are only two places where it's fun in the realistic area is right here where the game is very imbalanced and over here where the game is very balanced. We could be having fun all along this spectrum here if we explored more decks, in my opinion. So I kind of think that will 
resolve itself a little bit because one of the things was the um, it's expensive to explore other decks. Well, as people build up their collections, more decks will be explored because people will have more cards. So that might reduce this gap somewhat. And as more content creators come in, then people will be copying a larger pool of players and see more creativity kind of being dispersed to the masses, which might reduce the third factor. The middle factor of difficulty is there's nothing really you can do about that. And there's nothing you don't necessarily want to make all the decks easy because that would be bad. <laughs> uh, so... Without further ado, I want to show you guys a match uh, just to kind of close out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is just my theory and speculation. I want to highlight this match to kind of cover diversity in the meta. You can see that it's Enya versus Enya. If you know me, you know what kind of deck I'm playing. I see the Dragoon and I'm excited. Maybe this is a mirror match. Maybe this is the first time I've ever going to have a mirror match at all during my ranked run. So far, it still looks exactly the same as my deck. It still looks a lot like my deck. Don't know what's going on. I kind of have a sense that that's Morin, not Trivial. So, so far, I'm still happy, excited. Uh... For other people, they're like, oh, another mirror match. For me, it's like, I never have mirror matches. <laughs> I, I want I want to be tested. I want to see if people like my uh, cards. So I know my opponent has a last right, so I'm kind of scared to pull out the Blue Mountain Commando. But I don't get hurt, I don't get hurt by it. So I'm happy. My opponent made this huge mistake earlier where they hit their own trap with Morin, which is one of the downsides of Morin. <laughs> Since my Blue Mountain Commandos are uneven, I can safely move them all into the same row and not be afraid of uh, Scorch. I also did this because I had a lot of six strength units on the board and I didn't want them getting uh, Ignied or uh, Scorched, excuse me. Okay. Here I'm just, I'm playing as many bronze units as possible. Why? Because I kind of understand what deck I'm up against now. This was posted on uh, Gwentelman's meta snapshot as the control variant of Enya. So there's lots of scorches and stuff like that in it. I'm actually happy I drew a Saskia. I'm not going to mulligan anything. I could have mulliganed the uh, shrooms. Uh, but I was thinking that they might have had buff something up with their dragoons. But now all the buffs from their dragoons have been played. I've been counting all the green points that they've had. So I already know that that's going to happen. So you might say, oh, I don't have any gold cards. How am I going to do this? Well, I still have my leader ability, and that's a lot of gold cards. So my opponent may or may not have a Scorch. I didn't really see if he transformed anything. I'm going to play the bigger unit first, because they're going to be uneven. If I play two six strength units, you can Scorch them both. Well, he couldn't scorch them both immediately. So here I see uh, him play a Skellige Swarm. I know I only have Elven Mercenaries left in my deck, so I pull one and then use this, use it to um, remove the weather. I use Azur's Double Cross, so I get more points there. Um, this placement could be considered wrong. Depends. Here I take a risk, um, and I play my shrooms out. Arguably, I could have waited to play my Truvial later. I didn't have to play it now, and I could have put more buffs on it. That way it would have more protected strength. My units are all uneven strength, so I'm not really worried about getting Scorched or anything like that. Now, it might look like I have the same amount of points as my opponent on the board. I don't. So I can pass safely. If my opponent, whatever my opponent had left in their hand, I could have just, if it had more points than what I had on the board, I could have just passed. I mean, like, discarded a card from my hand and had his villain Trentmare kill it for me. Either way, it was a fun game. Thanks for watching.
what you people say. I'm gonna do my thing my way. No matter what you people do, I'm gonna do my thing much better than you. No matter what you say or do, oh boy, you're out of luck. It's gonna roll right off of me like water off the back of a duck. 